bring it back. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Oriental Empires. If you can remember back to the video we did last time, we got involved with a war with the Han down to the south of us. Um, we launched uh, an aggressive campaign with our army, with our warriors, our noble archers, um, and managed to take the city of Yangsheng from them. Um, we managed to loot it, stole over 2,000 gold, and then um, since they started to summon a very large amount of units, I managed to secure a favourable peace, which managed to keep my army intact, and is now this army is now withdrawing back across the river to safety. So we are chasing some barbarians, um, barbarian bandits, whatever you want to call them. They uh, try to attack Ao. They're being driven off by the garrison here, and everywhere else is basically building farms. So let's have a quick look what's going on elsewhere. So um, I think settlement may be upgraded to a larger size, but we don't have the money for that. So everywhere is building farms currently. Basically, uh, we settled, founded a new city uh, over to the right, on the east. Um, so then to join this up into this like four-way trading trading network. Um, next turn, we're also going to out of AO. I want to build a bazaar. Um, it does have the. We'll set it off this turn actually. Uh, while it does have the twenty, the, you know, the consequence of having um, twenty turn upkeep. I'm curious to see if we will get, uh, you know, an excess of trade between yin by having this sort of connected into a into a, like a double network. If this is the case, we could then start to upgrade all our cities, and that might give us sort of a massive increase in trade, which could be useful. Um, and everywhere else is basically just working, apart from um, we can send uh, start another farm constructing at bow, and then uh, check the technology, and then we'll press into the next turn. So everything's running. So let's press into the next turn. Uh, for the next war, which we will start to look at getting involved with shortly. Oh, that's annoying. It's very annoying when bandits are able to move so far and just outflank your armies because there's very little you can do about it. Because now it means all those farms have been burnt down. And they don't really get a chance to actually uh, prevent it, which is quite annoying. Um. But there we go, nothing I can do about it now. So uh, the next war is probably going to be something against like the Dangyi. It seems to be a smaller confederation um, and it's got quite an isolated city of Zhu over here which is well within trading range of all my cities so it seems silly not to try and take advantage of that. So the army is generally going to be marching in that direction to try and sort of attack that. Um, so down at Ao, a little bit of unrest but nothing to worry about. Uh, the bazaar is under construction, so we'll see in two turns if that makes any significant difference to sort of the overall output of the city. Um, but I'm not going to build any more farms for now, because I'd rather focus building effort on that bazaar just to get it done finished and quickly. Um, Jing needs another farm to be built. Uh, the finished one, good population growth now, so let's start on the second. And Yin also needs another farm. Start to build a farm out this way to improve. Trade regime. Okay, let's head into the next turn. Okay, well at least we've got close enough to actually attack these bandits before they cause too much trouble for me. Hopefully we should kill a reasonable number of them this turn. Let's just fast forward this a little bit. Anything else going on that turn, which there isn't. Um, brilliant. So those bath bandits were driven off, and then they were defeated uh, for pretty minimal losses. So these units need to return to the capital, the capital to Ao, um, in terms of their garrison to restore strength, and the rest of the army is marching on. So let's just have a quick check of our bazaar progress. I'm very curious about this when this is built to see what difference it makes to our income. So the farm was finished at bow, and there's no more room for any more farms, so we'll have to resort to a bit of more land clearance. Uh, yes, we'll go in this direction. Um, so we'll have to see what how that affects overall. 
Uh, Jin can also build another farm, I would have thought. Yes, because we still can uh, convert farm to irrigated farm because it's on the river. It's uh, getting to quite a, a dense network now of irrigated farms, which seems to be working quite well. Quickly check the technology. Uh, something finishes next turn, but this turn, nothing to do. So, let's head straight into the next turn. So our garrison has returned to AO. I'm pretty sure we're neutral with the hand, so they're not going to actually burn our farms down. One hopes, as I only just recently secured peace with them. Okay, and the bazaar got finished at AO. So we have seen a boost in income, so that is probably going to be down to external trade of Trenty, because it's trading with Yin. Mm, that's interesting. So it's basically offset itself. Yeah, in internal trade. Okay, that's, that's that's not too bad. So it's basically cost me nothing. We seem to have had a bit of a boost in terms of income. But is that worthwhile? Hmm, it may well be. Um, in terms of silk trade out of uh, our capital, which if you remember in the last game, in the last video, sorry, um, maybe one or two videos ago, we built a silk weaver. Um, but it has a cost of 80 per turn in terms of outlay, but we're gaining, well, we're still gaining a fair amount in terms of silk trade, although probably still not enough to actually offset the cost of building it in the first place. Um, with other things, so it will allow, oh, we could have a weaponsmith, but again, that's 40 per turn. It's the, it's the outlay of having such a building, which seems to be a problem initially. Um, Let's have a look if there's any sort of smaller buildings that could be built that would actually uh, produce as bronze. Could be useful, but again, it's just a it's just a cost that would really be better off being avoided. Could try building a bazaar out of bow. Yeah, let's build one there. That's probably worthwhile doing. Um, and then out of AO, we can just build a farm. Xing um, has built a second farm. But there's nothing else to do because uh, there's only still only two populations, so we just need to wait for the population to expand. And then out of the capital, well, which way do we want to go? We'll go down here. Okay. So, that's that. Uh, technology has finished, I believe. So let's have a quick look at this. So there's only a couple left to do in this one. So, bamboo strips, ship building. Um, high tin bronze. Increased chance of melee attack hit by 10%. Well, that sounds... Military technology always sounds useful, so we shall go for that. Press into the next turn. Uh, no battles to report yet. Um, so we're going to start to look at... Yes, I know, I remember edicts. Yes, I know, I know, I know. So if we just have a quick look at the bazaar building progress. Okay, hopefully in one more turn the bazaar should be built. Um, I want to have a quick look at diplomacy for the Dong Yi. So we only have seven turns in terms of um, peace with these people. So I think capturing Zhu seems like a worthwhile uh, long term or a relatively short term goal actually. Um, we've got garrisons there, garrison there. Okay, I'm just trying to confirm sort of the level of our upkeep. So a lot of our upkeep is pinned into um, just maintaining these garrisons against the enemy. We've also got a hostile nation down to the south, Zhao. So they could also be worth attacking. So, uh, not really a lot to do this turn. Nothing really important, so let's just press into the next turn and see what this bizarre at Bow does, see if that makes much difference. Once we start to get sort of a bit more of a stable long-term income, we can then look at investing in a weaponsmith in Yin, uh, without worrying too much about the upkeep of it. Okay, so that we have a, had a big jump in terms of trade. So where's this coming from? External trade 70. Okay, so we've gained 50 by having an exter having a bazaar built at Bow. So that was definitely worthwhile doing. Um, yeah, and I wonder if our trade has picked up at AO as well. 21. <laughs> it's picked up by one. <laughs> so 
So it's made a slight improvement now at air, so we're now in profit at least. So with that in mind, if I have enough money, I'm going to start constructing on a weaponsmith, I believe. That would be the most worthwhile thing. Um, so bronze, yeah, seems nice, but uh, weaponsmith seems the most likely and most useful thing. Uh, stables is nice, but 100 upkeep per turn is just very high. It will decimate any profits we have. So let's start construction on a weaponsmith. So our army is uh, still on the march towards Zhu. They've only got light spearmen there, so that's nothing to really worry about. Um, all of our cities are fairly well graded down here. One thing that could be worth investing in is probably a rammed earth wall at AO, since this is probably the most vulnerable city to attack from the Han, so this is the first one they're going to meet. Um, that might be something to start thinking about saving up for going forwards. Um, and then in terms of farm construction, I could build a farm there. A bow, yes I want to do that. Ao can construct a farm. And Jing, which has now gained another population, can also construct a farm. Brilliant. So that's that for this turn, I think. Oh no, we've got a few, okay, a few technologies to update. So military technology. Uh, so, I was construction of market and caravanserie. Coming up. Salt tax. Okay. Coinage. Sounds useful. Let's go for that. Um, increase the QI of all new characters. Increase culture. Let's do that one. Next turn. Um, nothing much really going on this turn. Our army is now advancing up to the border with Zhu. I'll probably move it back into our territory and then once the time comes we can just march straight over. So I'll go somewhere like there. And then we can attack the Zhu as soon as our peace treaty is finished. Um, the Han don't seem to be making any trouble, which is good. Uh, nothing else really to report in terms of building. Let's just make sure our weaponsmith is being properly built. Yes, so that'll finish next turn, which is excellent. Um, our money has dropped off a little bit. Oh, that's interesting. So we're overworking the peasants, so I need to give them a break for a turn or two, perhaps. To increase, increase uh, overall happiness. Ah, sad that. So there's no unrest there. Oh, there's a bit of unrest see, down here. Okay, so I might need to start considering uh, not building farms for a couple of turns. So population goes, lets that slow down slightly. But in return, uh, there may be slightly increased peasant happiness, and that may increase income, actually, which is always what we want. Money, money, money always seems to be the problem currently with this campaign. So our army is now positioning itself on the border. I'm very pleased with our army. Um, I really like to see the archers in battle. They've not actually seen any combat yet. I'm curious to see how that would pan out. So, we've got a new heir. Uh, well, he looks very young. Zhong Ding. Um, okay. And the weaponsmith has been built. So, has this allowed me to recruit anything else? E Peasant dagger axemen. Okay. Kit with a long handled dagger axe. These men can deliver lethal chopping bows. Or chopping blows, even, not bows. And hook aside shields. Okay, so that's good. So we've got some increased units, and if you have a look, compared to say the, uh, the peasant light spearmen that you start off with, their damage is a lot more. They've got a lot more attack, so they can make use of the, which is good. So we've also got our archers. Oh, and we've got trained dagger X man. Dagger, God, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Trained dagger X men. Uh, so these have increased attack again and increased defense and armor. So these are really strong good units. They're like the warriors that I've got in my noble bodyguard. So that's good. I'm pleased with the technology improvements we've got there and it's not caused a massive deficit in terms of budget which is even better. So everywhere is finished building so let's just have a quick look at the population happiness. So I'm going to leave them to work for a bit. Leave you to work for a bit um, but you are going to have to build another farm since you have no unrest and you're a tiny little city and you need more food. So we are still got four more turns until we can launch our attack on Zhu. 
I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm going to capture the city or if I'm just going to sack it. Um, it would be nice to sack it for the money. But at the same time, it is in quite a nice position. So it probably wouldn't make sense to try and capture the city. And that would also put us in a position to attack Shangshan further in the north. Um, ah, so we've seen quite an increase in population there. Um, in income, sorry. I wonder if that's just because of general increased increased happiness. If I look at terms of our financial tab, I wonder if it tells us if this has what uh, what impact this has on uh, I do not know. I do not understand. Okay. So uh, I'm going to save up to 2000 which I think is the cost of building the improved walls at Ao. It is from Rammed Earth Walls. Uh, so we'll just leave that for the moment to continue to do its thing. Uh, no technology has completed this turn and nothing else really to do. So let's just head straight into the next turn. We probably won't get to attack Zhu uh, in this episode. But uh, the next episode will be coming out very shortly. So then we can go and crush these uh, people to the north of us. Oh, I, <laughs> they want peace and they shall offer me a gold. No. You're going to get flattened. I don't think there's any amount of gold unless it was an extortionate amount you could offer me. Which would keep peace between us. So this turn what's happened. We've just got a farm has been finished. Nothing else really to do. So I think we'll go back to farm building again a little bit. Um, we're starting to get unrest at Bow due to overcrowding. Ah, oh, because the settlement is pretty desperate to upgrade. Well, not really a lot I can do about that. I just haven't got the uh, the money at the moment. Um, this also yes. Okay, interesting to know. So, no, for now, let's just keep building farms. Um, we'll keep constructing farms out. Jing Jing is starting to get sort of a reasonable growth now. It's up to six people. Um, a farm, more farms can be built at Ao. Bo is suffering from overcrowding. Um, I wonder what happens if we build like a shrine. Let's build a shrine. What does this do? Increase peasant happiness by 10%. At 20 gold a turn? No, you're not having a shrine. Chop down a forest instead. Um, we can build more farms at our capital of Yin, which we shall do. We've got that assigned there now. Um, let's have a quick check of the technologies, which are all okay. I'm interested to see what happens when we get the coinage technology, if that's allowed market. I believe that is an upgrade to the bazaar. So that's something that's going to be certainly worth doing at Yin. Um, it could, could increase our income significantly, which would be nice. Although I may have spent all the money at this point on walls at Ao. Um, nothing really to report this turn, no bandits, sightings, only a couple more turns and then we can attack Zhu. Um, okay, terrible fire over there, interesting, would make it worthwhile targeting it now. Oh yes, some of the towers have burnt down, hmm, interesting. Oh look, these people have built up quite a significantly larger army out of Zhu now, which I hadn't been expecting. Um, so let's look at recruiting a couple more people from here. So we'll have one more unit of archers and one unit of trained dagger axemen. So let's go back, add a yin. So I'm not sure who the leader and who the bodyguard is um, and who the heir is. So I'm assuming this guy's the heir. Yes, Zhong Ding. So it's less important if he dies. So I'm going to march him along with uh, the, sort of the trained archers and my trained dagger axemen up to reinforce the army before we go to war with the Zhu. Since I don't really want to go to war and end up losing because then I'll look like an idiot. So straight into the next turn. Nothing much really happening this turn, no bandits to report. Just continue to expanding our cities and continue to move our armies further north. Uh, it'll certainly be next video uh, once we finish this turn. We'll probably have to bring this video to a close. Uh, attack Dong Yi within seven turns. Is that the people who are about to attack anyway? Probably. 
Or do I really want you to do that? No, I'd, I'd rather you didn't get to all of them. I'd rather deal with it on my own terms. Okay, so I think things aren't looking too bad. We've still got a, a reasonable income, although I'd like to get that higher. Although hopefully with when we unlock the market, that's going to cause me a good increase in income from Yin. Um, our armies are going to join oops, join up here before we go to war with the Zhu. Because now they've got more things like two noble chariots. They could be problems. I'm not too worried about things like the peasant light spearmen and the tribal light spearmen. I don't think that's going to be a massive threat to me. But they have got walls. And they have got a palisade wall. And it could be quite hard to seize this. Even with sort of our, our superior and larger army. So I hope you've enjoyed this video guys. If you have please like, comment, subscribe. All the good stuff. Thanks guys. And I'll see you on the next one.